this class uses a lot of algebra, and so I wanted to take this video and review some of the most common mistakes that people have in dealing with fractions. Most of these mistakes stem from not knowing how to deal with a fraction that looks like this. When we have a fraction over another fraction. And the reason why this is difficult is because it's actually impossible to know the answer to this unless you've been more careful with the fraction to begin with. And what I mean by that is that there are two different forms this could take. This could be asking what is the answer to one half divided by three, or it could be asking what is the answer to one divided by two thirds. And these are different problems. So we're gonna cover the two rules that you need to know in order to be able to solve either of these problems correctly. So the first is to notice that dividing by a number, say I have x and I divide it by two, is equal to taking x and multiplying it by one over two. This is a simple rule, but it's very helpful in solving these problems and is frequently forgotten. Because all I need is to take this rule and apply it to this problem, and it becomes much easier. I have one half divided by three. Now I apply this rule, dividing by three is the same as multiplying by one over three. So that's equal to one half times one over three. And now I simply multiply one times one equals one, and two times three equals six. And the answer to this problem is one sixth. The next rule that we need to remember in order to be able to solve these problems is how to rearrange a fraction to move it from having multiple levels to just one. So let's start off by looking at this fraction where I have a over b divided by c over d. Now some of you might remember that the simple rule to follow this is just to flip the bottom up, to put the d here and the c here, and you get that it's equal to a d over bc. But for this rule to be helpful in solving out this problem, where we don't have a top and a bottom, we need to understand why we flip it like this. And so the real thing that we're doing here when we have a fraction over another fraction is that we're multiplying the fraction by 1. Because multiplying by 1 doesn't actually change the answer at all. The key is that we're going to multiply by the right one. And by that I mean we're going to multiply by d over c over d over c. And what this means is since d over c and d over c are the same, when I divide them, this entire thing is equal to 1. But by doing it this way, it allows me to cancel these, and that is what leaves me with a d over b, c as my answer. So if I apply that rule to this fraction up here, I can see that to change this to be just one fraction, I need to multiply by one. Specifically, I need to multiply by a one that will cancel out the bottom. And so that one is going to be multiplying by the reciprocal, or three halves. But don't forget, we also have to put a three halves on top so that this entire part is equal to one. Now that I have it there, it's a simple matter that the bottom cancels out and I'm left with one times three halves or my answer of three halves. So by using these two simple rules, you'll be able to avoid the majority of mistakes that people make on homework and on tests using complicated fractions.